Okay, hello there and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be covering color correction. So here I have my composition open in After Effects called Color Correction, and I have this shot of a drone. It's a very flat shot, but here I have it. And you will see that I have my color panel open. And if you don't see this, you can just go over here and you should be able to find it in this list here. And over here, you will see that I have my Lumetri Scopes open and I have this one set to Luma. And if you don't see this, then just click over here on this wrench and make sure you have the Luma waveform selected and not the Parade RGB. And then under waveform type, have it set to Luma. Now to understand this waveform, I'm actually going to drag it over here and put it down here so that we can really see it. And I'm gonna bring this guy down a little bit. And I'll bring this guy down, zoom out a little bit, and we have this. Now how this works is that this waveform reads from left to right. So this left part is showing me the left part of my image, and then the middle is showing me the middle, and then the right side is showing me the right side of my image. So this lower portion here is known as your blacks and shadows. These are the darkest pixels in your image. The middle part is known as your midtones. These are your gray pixels that are not quite black or white. They're somewhere in the middle in that gray area. And at the top here, we have our highlights and our whites. These are the pixels that are white or close to white. And the Luma shows us our tonality, which is our whites, blacks, and grays. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back over here like this, bring this guy up. and I'll zoom him back up to 100%. All right, so now that we know how this waveform works, I'm gonna add an effect to our drone shot. So go over to your effects and presets and type in Lumetri color. And this is what we're gonna use here. And I'm gonna open up the basic correction. All right, now before we start adjusting things, I wanna make something very clear. When you're doing color correction or color grading, it's very important that you're working primarily off of your Lumetri Sculpts and not so much your video in your composition. Because the Lumetri Sculpts is what's going to give you an accurate view. Now, why can't we look at our composition image? Well, the answer is because we cannot really trust our eyes with this. Your eyes may be tired or you may have a light on your screen or your monitor may be bad. So color correcting relying solely on your video is just unreliable. Now, if you still want to correct solely off of your video, you could say work in a grave room. You could put your light behind your monitor because sometimes if the light hits the monitor, that can affect the color. Or you could even buy a monitor that's calibrated for color correction. But many of us may not have those options, so we are going to use primarily the Lumetri Scopes. Now, with the basic correction under our tone, we are able to adjust the tonality of our image. So we can adjust our exposure like this which makes it brighter or darker. Press Control Z or Command Z to undo that. We can also adjust our whites. So if I bump this up, notice that the white parts of my image are getting very bright. And if I brought it down low, it brings your whites down. And you wanna have your whites around 100. Somewhere around here. And you wanna be careful when doing this not to overdo it like I did before, because when you do this, you're blowing out the white parts of your image and it just doesn't look good. So I'll set this back to zero. And that looks about right. Now with the blacks, we can also adjust these. So notice if I brought it up, the black parts of my image are getting a little bit washed out. We see it right here, a little bit washed out. But if I brought it down low, they become a true black. So somewhere around here, I'd say, negative 22. And you wanna be careful not to overdo this part as well, because if you do, you just crush the blacks and that doesn't look good. I'll set that back to negative 22. Now we can also adjust our shadows here. So your shadows are your midtones downward. So if I was to drag this down, notice how it affects the midtones and it brings them down like this. And notice if I really bring it down, how it's becoming more compressed here. You see that?
And then with the highlights, it works the same way, but upward. So it's the mid-tones, but it brings them up towards the top. So towards the white. And I have something like this. And I'll bring down my whites just a little bit. Now we also have our contrast. And how this works is that it adjusts the highlights and the shadows at the same time. So notice how the shadows are being brought up and the highlights are being brought down. But if I was to bump this up, notice how everything is being spread out in the opposite direction. So highlights are going up and shadows are going down. I'll set that back to zero. So this is our image. And if we want to see our before and after, all we have to do is click on this active. So this is what we had before. And this is what we now have. And if you don't like what you have here, you can always reset it like this and start all over. And with this auto button right here, you can use this too. And it gives you a little bit of a starting point. But I'm just going to press Control Z because I actually like what we had. So that's how to work with your tonality. All right, now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more saturation because when you're stretching out your image like this, it's good to add a little bit of it. So I will bump this up to say 115. And this is what we have. And one other side note with the Lumetri color in After Effects is that it works a little bit slower than it works in Premiere, so you'll have to be a little bit more patient with it. All right, so next we are going to look at our curves down here. And I'm actually going to just reset this like this. And then I will open up the curves down here. And you may ask why I skipped the creative, and that's because the creative is just simply to add more polish to your image. And that's something that you can do when you're done with your color correction. So I'm just gonna leave this alone right now. Now with the curves here, you will see that we have these different lines here. So we have our white line right here. And this here deals with the tonalities. So you could actually do your basic correction in here if you wanted to. So notice if I was to grab, say, my whites right here. And then if I was to bring it over here, notice how the whites are being blown out. If I drag it down, it brings the whites down. Same with the blacks. Blacks being crushed. Blacks are being lifted up right here. And if you want to adjust the shadows, you can do this. And the highlights, you could do this. And you can add as many points on this as you want. So, And then to reset it, you just double click on your graph and you have a new graph. Now I'm just going to set these really quickly. Nice. Now, what about these other circles right here? We have a red one, we have a green one, and we have a blue one. Well, this is our RGB. And to use these effectively, we're gonna open up our RGB parade. So go down here to your wrench here, and then select RGB parade. Notice that it brings up this, and I'm gonna close the Luma waveform. Close that up, and make sure also that you have the parade type set to RGB. Now, how do these work? Well, they work very similar to the Luma waveform. This red area is showing us our red in the image from left to right. Same with the green. So it's the green in our image from left to right. And then the blue is showing us the blue in our image from left to right. And if we want to adjust these individually, we can. So we can say grab this and we can adjust our reds the way that we want them to be. And we can use these curves to balance out the color in our image. So the red here, let's say I want to bring the darks down to this zero. It's right around here and bring down the shadows a little bit. And raise up the highlights. Now notice that my image is looking a little magenta. So now I'm going to go ahead and affect the green to kind of balance this all out. Now it's looking a little bit greenish, so I'm going to affect the blue, and that should change it. To something like that. So what we're doing here is we are basically balancing out our colors and our RGB so that the RGB parade looks even. 
So, all right, so that looks pretty good to me. Notice how on the top they're pretty even, around here they're pretty even, and then on the bottom they're pretty similar. So that's what you want to do. You want to kind of just even these all out until you get an image that looks good. So that's how you can work with the RGB curves and the RGB parade. Okay, so now we are going to look at the color wheels. So I will close this up and I will open up the color wheels. And for this, I'm going to change my Lumetri scopes and I'm going to select this vector scope YUV. And then I'm going to close down the parade. And then the YUV, I have it set to RGB. Now, how do these wheels actually work? Well, these are something that you can use to balance out the color of your image and your video or to even set the tonality but I'm going to use it here to color grade, which is something that you do after your color correction is done. And color grading is when we start stylizing the image to give it a creative look. And you will notice that I'm able to adjust the colors of my shadows, midtones, and highlights from here. And if I click on one of these, I activate it. And if I double click, it deactivates. And if I click and drag, I'm able to move, move the shadow color more towards red, or towards this tealish color. And if I hold down shift, it goes faster when you drag it like this. Double click to undo that. And you can adjust the midtones as well or the highlights the way that you want to. I'm gonna double click on these. And with these sliders here, these actually adjust how bright or how dark the shadows, midtones, and highlights are. Bring this down. Notice that my shadows are getting darker. I brought it up, it gets brighter. And then just double click on the black part here to undo it. Same with the midtones, it gets darker or brighter. And the same with the highlights. So that's just another way that you can really mess with your contrast down here. Now, what about this uh, vector scope? So how this graph works is that it shows us our colors in our image. So we have the yellow of our image and we see that our image has a lot towards this yellow area. We see the red as well, the magenta, blue, cyan, and green. Now, if we want to say, remove a little bit of the yellow and bring it towards the blue, we would just simply have to bring our color wheels more towards this blue area. So I will grab the highlights and I'll bring it over towards the blue and notice how this is being moved towards the blue. And if I did it with the midtones as well, notice how it's getting bluer and so on. So here you're able to just uh, really adjust where the color direction is going in your image. I'll double click this like that. So if you want to get rid of a certain color, you just go to the opposite end. So if you want to get rid of the magenta in your image, you would add more green. If you wanted to get rid of the red in your image, you would add more cyan. If you wanted to get rid of the blue in your image, you add more yellow. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just play with this and try to come up with something, so. All right, so this is what I have. Um, if I turn it off before and after, I know it's a very subtle change, but I just wanted to show you guys how to work with the color wheels and vector scope. All right guys, so lastly what I'm gonna show you is how to work with the HSL secondary. And this allows us to change specific colors in our image. So how it works is you set the color, so click here, and then click on your image. And then to better see the color that you selected, I like to press this show mask, and it shows us here, and you can set it to color in gray, or color in black, or white and black, like this. So we see it. And what I like to do is invert the mask also. So we can also see our background as well. Now you can add color to this. So we need to add more red. So I will do that. Skim through your image. And if you want to say remove a certain color, you just simply invert your mask. So you can see the color again, the red. Click on this remove color and select it and it removes the color. I'm gonna press Control Z or Command Z to undo that. So 
So I've gotten most of the red out. I like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna open up my sliders right here, the HSL sliders, and notice that I have the hue right here, the saturation, and the luminance. Now if I was to grab this whole hue thing and move it, it allows me to adjust how much hue from my set color that I want to actually be here. And I'm going to invert this again to better see it. All right, and with the hue over here, you can adjust the handles also as well. And that can help you sometimes. I'll press Control Z to undo that. Now down to the saturation, if I move this over. All right, now if your image looks a little noisy, you may wanna add a little bit of denoise so you can bump this up to however you want it to be. Maybe around there. And then the blur, you can bump this up as well. But be careful not to overdo this because if you overdo it, it just doesn't work. So I'll put this to say around, right around here. Actually, let's do 0.7. So now that that's done, we can actually uh, turn off the mask like this and we can start adjusting our color with the color wheels. So if I open this up, I have the big color wheel or I can work with the three color wheels down here and I'll bring this over a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So if I wanted to say change the midtones of my car, I could do something like that, see how the color changes. So you're able to adjust your color with these wheels here. I'm gonna set these back actually, and I'm just gonna make one big correction here. So click and it changes. Uh, let's do this orange color. And if I play this back, I have this. An orange car. And if you want to see what it was like before, you just go up here, click this active. This is what we had before. This is what we have now. So that's a little bit about how to work with the HSL secondary. So that's how you can do color correction and color grading in After Effects. I hope that you will give it a try and we will see you in the next one. Until next time.